Hey, what's up guys? So if I'm being totally honest, I'm a tad bit obsessed when it comes to color. And when we edit, we try really hard to vary up our color palettes depending on what we're shooting, what the story is, and what kind of emotion we're trying to convey in the image. But as you may know, this is easier said than done, and especially when you're shooting both photo and video for a single project. So today we're going to talk about what we use to color both our photos and our video and get a nice cohesive look to our final product. So the key is to use LUTs. And while there are a ton of different companies that will sell you different LUT packs, we chose to go with LUTify, not only because their LUTs look beautiful, but also because they integrate into all the big name photo editors too. So all of you Lightroom, Capture One, and On One users can actually use these LUTs to manipulate your RAW files, similar to how you'd use these LUTs on your footage. So let's look at a quick example of how I use these LUTs to color my photos and video. All right, so here we are inside of Premiere, and what I have here is just a couple clips of a small shoot that we did inside our studio. Um, this was for the review of the Kame TV Andromeda RGB lights that we put up a couple months ago and I just really wanted to use these clips because um, A, they show off the effect of the LUTs really well because of you know how much color is in the scene and B, I have photos with the exact same light setup so we can directly compare the results. Alright, so basically this is just some really nice slow motion footage. Likes putting on his sunglasses there. Of course, we're using reflective sunglasses, so that really kind of shows off all those cool light patterns on the glasses themselves. And I'm also using the HLG profiles on the Sony a7 III to film this. So if you're using standard profiles, um, you can't edit the color as much. I find with HLG, with the larger color space that you're shooting in, you can actually edit a lot more of the color information. So I really recommend using HLG. If not, definitely use a flatter profile to get more information into your footage. All right, so I find with HLG footage on the Sony a7 III, it actually responds really well to the LUTs from Letify. So typically I only have to basically add one adjustment layer with one type of LUT on it, and then I'm just tweaking the video clips just a little bit to get them to match, or just get the exposures right on each clip. So really not a whole lot of work that I have to do to this. And yeah, basically it just depends on which LUT I wanna to use to get the look that I want. And we're just gonna go right into this adjustment layer and choose our LUT. So of course you can just come down and open up your creative tab, go into looks, browse, and then find your LUT like that. But Lutify actually offers a really cool software um, from their website where you can preview all the LUTs on a snapshot that you've taken from your footage in Premiere. So we can just go here, take a snapshot of this. Just make sure we put it in a place where we can find it. So I just put it on desktop for now. And don't import to project. Go like that and then just gonna bring over the LUT previewer here. So if you are subscribed to Lutify, you get access to this previewer on their website and here you can just load the image, go to my desktop, find the JPEG, open that up. And now we have a snapshot of our footage inside the previewer so we can go through all the different LUTs and find one that we like. So I can open up the Cine looks and we can just go through all of these different looks finding a LUT that suits it best. And with this footage, you can see really clearly just how much each LUT is changing the reds and the blues. So of course, we're gonna want to find a LUT where we don't see a lot of difference between the blues on her cheek and the blues on her hand. So this one would definitely not be good. Um, that one, it's a little bit better, but I'm thinking a little bit more of like a reddish purple tone to these images. So, Something that's a little bit better, but I think I might actually go with something a little bit stronger. So something like this, I think is what I'm looking for. So the blue tones are quite consistent across her skin. The red tones are looking pretty good as well. And I actually really like that the light is darkening the background, so I don't have to deal with the light spill as much as I did with the original footage. So I'm really liking that. I can go back into Premiere and choose that same LUT. All right, so I found the same LUT and I'm gonna apply it to my footage. And now we have that on the adjustment layer 
and drag throughout all the footage. And as you can see, footage looking quite a bit nicer, quite a bit more saturated, quite a bit more contrasty. And it just brings the colors together in a really nice way. And of course, from there, I can go into my basic correction tab, you know, might bring the exposure up a little bit, I might bring my shadows down a little bit, kind of crush those blacks even more. And I'm liking that, so that's looking pretty good. That footage is looking pretty good. And yeah, I don't really have to touch this too much. As I said, the HLG profile from the Sony a7 III responds really well to these LUTs. Um, generally, you know, I just have to apply the LUT once across the entire footage and I'm pretty happy with most of the results that I get. It's only like the heavier grades that I actually have to go in and, you know, adjust my split toning or something like that to get it to match um, some more complex edits. So. That is pretty much all I'm doing inside Premiere. As I said, really easy, really simple. And now I'm gonna show you how easy it is to match that video edit across all my photos as well. Okay, so we're gonna start inside of Capture One and I'm gonna go to some of these photos. As you can see, pretty much the exact same light setup. But of course, the raw photo looks a lot more contrasty straight out of camera than the HLG footage does. So we can go into our Styles tab where we have all these LUTs loaded up. So we have LUTify ME JPEG styles and LUTify ME RAW styles. And then we have a couple different folders. So unfortunately with Capture One, these third party styles from LUTify aren't exactly supported the same way that regular styles um, directly from Capture One are. So you can't apply them to layers and you can't adjust the opacity of them once you apply them. So to circumvent that, LUTify has created four different folders with four different strengths of these styles. So you can go 100%, 25, 50, and 75%. Today we're gonna go with 100% to start. And I'm just gonna go down to the same LUT that we used before. So we're gonna use Chort. And if I'm honest, that's looking a little bit strong. So we're gonna try 50% to see if it lightens the effect a little bit. If we go down there, find the same one. It's looking a little bit better. So I think I might be okay with this. I'm gonna go to the dynamic range tab, bring down my highlights a little bit, bring up my shadows. I take the saturation down a little bit. Bring the exposure up. So that is looking a lot closer to our video footage. And the main thing that I want to illustrate is that the colors, like the reds are the same between the two files and the blues are the same between the two files. So obviously you can't, you know, your photos and video are going to look a little bit different just because video captures way less information. You have way less dynamic range, um, way less col color information, especially if you're shooting Sony and you only have 8-bit footage. But what's really nice is you can get your photos and video to look quite close to each other just with one click of a button and applying one single LUT to your media. All right, so let's jump into Lightroom now. I'm gonna show you the workflow for that. And it's generally the same, except for that in Lightroom, these styles are actually in the profile folder. So all you have to do is go over to profiles here, go to the browse tab, go down. And if you open up Cine Looks, we can actually find the exact same LUT, go to Chort. And then here we have an amount slider. So that's really nice in Lightroom, you can actually adjust the, the strength of the LUT right here with an infinite slider. So let's go to the same, let's go to 50%. Excellent, and just like in Capture One, we can adjust the shadows, adjust the highlights, adjust the exposure. And that's looking pretty good there. So in Lightroom, pretty much the same, and in Lightroom CC, it's even more similar. So if we go here, go to Edit, same thing as Lightroom Classic, we have a Profiles tab. We can just browse all these. Cine looks. Go down to Chort. Go up here, go back. We can, of course, adjust the amount. And then same thing, highlight, shadows, exposure, and saturation, etc. So really easy, um, really effective. And we can go into our finished results just to kind of show you guys what those look like. So these are the final three images from our shoot um, with this setup. And as you can see, I just went into Photoshop, did some retouching work. I find it really important, especially if you're doing color gel portraiture, that you really go into Photoshop and you make sure you retouch those images because the 
boundary zone um, between the two lights that you're using um, always kind of has some weird skin tone issues with it. I generally find that reds will start to turn into like weird nasty pink colors and stuff like that. So um, I really advocate that if you're doing color gel portraiture, you make sure you spend the time, you retouch your work and you make sure that skin looks as good as it can be. And other than that, I just kind of blacked out these areas on either side there just to kind of hide those uh, lighting fixtures that were there. And then this was just using a prism to get a really nice reflection. So if we look at that, we look at our footage here. I would say definitely the photos are more saturated. They're a lot more contrasty. Of course, we can come here, we can like bump up the saturation. You know, we can go into curves and adjust the colors to a few saturation curves that are really handy inside Premiere. So lots that you can do, but just wanted to give a quick example about how applying the LUTs across your photos and your video really gets them to look similar and it just makes the workflow really, really easy. So to get these LUTs um, that you can use on both photo and video, you're looking at a one-time cost of $60 followed by a yearly cost of about $20 a year. And this $20 a year kind of gives you access to that LUT previewer that I showed you before, as well as free new LUTs as they come out, as well as updates to older LUTs, you know, as they're updating the support for the LUTs that are currently available. For us though, what's important is that LUTify just makes it really easy to unify our colors between our photo and video, since we are a photo and video team and really pride ourselves in delivering high quality photo and video with just a two person team, um, just so we can keep it really intimate really good for the couple and they don't have to work with too many people on their wedding day. So of course having high quality results is really important to us and of course saving time and saving ourselves from the headaches during editing sessions you know is just worth its weight in gold and is definitely worth the $60 cost. So if you are intrigued and want to try out these LUTs, definitely click the link down below and you can download a free LUT pack from their website. And of course, if you like what you see, purchase the professional package to get access to about 221 LUTs that you can use for both your video as well as your raw photos inside, I think it's Lightroom, Capture One, On One, Alien Skin, and Luminar. So a huge variety of editors that you can use these LUTs in. And yeah, we've been using these LUTs for about a year now and really have zero regrets. They are really, really awesome in our opinion. All right guys, so there is gonna be a ton more tutorials and behind the scenes footage coming out on our channel in the next couple months. So definitely make sure you don't miss anything and you hit that subscribe button. But for now, thank you guys as always for watching and I'll see you in the next one.